Okay, something important that we can do is we can play more than one note at a time, and that's called a chord. You've probably heard the term chord. When someone strums a guitar or hits more than one note on a piano, they're playing a chord. Chords are great when you're playing pads, pedals, or riffs. Okay, let me show you how a chord works. The most simple chord you can have is in a pad. So I'm just going to loop our pad here. We have a single note. If I duplicate that note and play two notes, we have a chord. So there's two notes. Let me go back to just one note. One note. Here's two notes again. We can even have three notes. I'm going to go ahead and drag a third note up here. Here's a three note chord. So you can have chords in the in pads very easy. You can also have chords in pedals easily. Let's take a look at that. If I had these notes right here, one note. Let me add a second note above it. Now we have two notes. There's three notes. There's four notes. They can get pretty big. You have too many notes though. It starts to take over, and now there's no room for our melody, right? Because you can see these notes are stepping on the melody in the lead part. So we don't usually have chords that are that big. We usually have chords that are two or three notes at most in rock and roll. So that's a chord and a pedal and a chord in the pad. There's the pad. I'll play them both. So a chord is just more than one note at a time. Think of it as someone strumming a guitar. A final important thing that can happen with music elements is called a progression, and a progression means that an element starts at different points over a cycle. So usually that cycle is four to eight bars, and we're going to change it, and it's, this comes to be known as a chord progression, when we have multiple notes playing at once, and the starting point changes. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so to show you a chord progression, I'm going to take our first pad here, and then in the next major, I'm going to change its starting position. I'm going to shift its starting position to a different note. I'm going to do the same thing on the third major and the fourth major. I'm going to come back to the original note. Okay, so what we're going to have here is a progression of pads that starts on different notes. Major one, it starts on the C. Major two, it starts on this. That's an E flat. Uh, major three is going to be a B flat, and major four is going to be an a, a C again. So let's listen to that. See if you can hear that these two are the same and these two are shifting their starting points. If we looked at the score, they would all be whole notes, lasting a whole measure, but they're shifting their starting point. We can, of course, make those chords. Now you hear two notes. This is a chord progression with pads. If we wanted to have a pedal underneath that, we could just simply do the same thing. I'm going to take this pedal here that was playing an eighth note all the way through the four majors. I'm going to shift its starting point, just like I did with the pad. So I'm going to move this one. Let's say we'll go down on that one. Oops, missed that note. And we'll go up on this guy. And we'll leave this one the same. So if we listen to this progressing pedal now, we hear this. Okay, and then we can add a chord. Make it a chord by making more than one note at a time. So we hear these chords, but we hear them shifting. Now you. You'll see that this note carries on between these chords because these two chords have a note in common. And same with these two, which actually our ears like that sound. Don't stress out too much about that, but I'd like you to hear that there's a pedal playing, more than one note playing, and it's shifting its starting point. I can actually add that pad back in here. Let me get them both playing. This is how a chord progression works. More than one note shifting its starting point. Okay, I can do the same thing with the riff. The riff just needs to shift where it starts. So I'm going to take my riff, riff here, and it, it starts on this C, but I'm going to shift it on the second one to this note. Okay, and I have to make some minor tweaks to it here. Now my riff will sound like this. 
and then I can shift it again. I'm going to take this last note out of this riff just so you can see it more clearly. So da 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 da. And then I can go right back to the beginning. And your ears are probably hearing the chord progression at this point. Now I can add that pedal back into it. And as long as everybody's shifting at the same time, it sounds good. And the pad. And the beat. And that's how we add a chord progression to a song. I have progressing pads up here, progressing pedal in the middle, and progressing riff on the bass. These can be used in any accompaniment or bass part. In the melodies, we usually do not progressing pads, pedals, or riffs. We'll have some sort of melody, but now that melody would need to line up with the chords. I'm just going to move some of these notes around so it lines up a little better. Okay, so to get my melody to work, all I had to do was really move this one note, and I moved this one a little bit. Uh, but here you can see how the melody will work over the top of these chords. Okay, And I know no one knows music theory, that's fine. I just want you to hear that the melody responds to the progression. So we've got a riff, we've got a pad, sorry, a pad, we've got a pedal, and we've got a melody, and they are progressing. See if you can hear that in the music you listen to. Okay, there's a few other terms I want you to know here. Uh, 2D just means everything's playing at the same time, and that's a traditional classical music uh, definition when the whole orchestra is playing. It's kind of a fun term I'd like you to know. Counterpoint means different instruments are playing different elements at different times. And we've been looking at counterpoint right here. This is very much counterpoint. If everybody was playing a pad or everybody was playing a pedal, we would call that unison. They would be moving or in similar motion. Okay, similar motion. Unison isn't our term used for that, but we'll use similar motion. Counterpoint means different motion. They're moving differently. Okay. Some things that uh, I would like you to know, some other terms. Homophonic means the instruments sound similar to each other. Heterophonic means they don't. When we talked about those instrument families, the string family, those are a homophonic sound. All the strings sound similar to each other, but they sound different from the woodwinds, and they sound different from the brass, or they might sound different from the synthesizer. Okay. Monophonic means one voice at a time. Polyphonic means more than one voice at a time. The music we listen to is polyphonic. When we have bass accompaniment and lead parts, we are playing polyphonic music. Okay? Even when we're playing a chord in one part, we're playing three notes on a guitar. That is polyphonic. A guitar would be a polyphonic, homophonic sound. It would have more than one note that sounds similar. A guitar and a piano would be polyphonic, but they'd be heterophonic, meaning they sound different from each other. And lastly, if you ever hear this term arrangement, it's one I want you to know. The arrangement is just how all these things are put together in a song. When a song is copyrighted, all that can be copyrighted are the lyrics and the melody. The actual chord progression, the elements, the notes, the instruments are playing, the instruments themselves, and the parts and sections are not. Those are all considered part of the arrangement. And you can take any melody and arrange it in a number of different ways. You can make it sound like a rock song. You can make it sound like a classical song. So the arrangement is the idea of how do we put these instruments together and what elements are being played. Okay, once you've familiarized yourself with the basic definitions here, feel free to take a look at this music elements diagram. It's also on Canvas. And what I've tried to do here is outline the basic elements we've been talking about and how they line up with duration going from short to long, and repetitiveness, going from very repetitive to not repetitive. I want to tell you just a little bit about this diagram, and maybe this will help you visualize some of the elements. We're going to ignore this line element for this class right now, so just ignore that one. Uh, we've talked about pedals, and pedals are both short and repetitive. Okay, Beats and riffs are also short, but not as short as a pedal, because it's not just a single note. They're a collection of notes, and they're not as repetitive as a pedal, because they're that collection of notes repeating, and it's usually one to two bars. A pedal is one note, right? One note repetitive. So as we move this direction, our, our elements get longer. Pads are very long. We hold it for a long period of time. 
Melodies are long, we hold them for a long period of time, okay? But pads are very repetitive, similar to a pedal, because it's just the same note over and over. We get to non-repetitive. Melodies are somewhat repetitive and somewhat non-repetitive and fairly long, so you'll see that they're further to the right and further up on this grid. And then up here on the left, I have a break or a fill, which is short and not repetitive at all. Okay, so the difference between a beat and a pedal and a riff and a break or fill is that is the amount of repetition. You just don't repeat these. A hit is another term for a fill. It would be a single note uh, in a fill. So again, to recap that, things that are on the bottom left here are short and more repetitive. Things in the top right are longer and less repetitive. I have a table here of music examples that you can listen through with pads, pedals, riffs, beats, progressing riffs, fills and melodies and so please take a listen through this and familiarize yourself with that these are the sort of things that will be on the exam and quizzes let me know if you have questions on those okay that's it for the definitions I'm gonna have another video showing you some examples of how I analyze a song